This is episode 56 of the Pie Craft Beer Show for Monday, September 13th, 2021. In today's show, Chris, Steve, Josh, and Jacob try four craft beers. A fruited sour, a double dry hopped New England IPA, a Belgian style sour ale, and an imperial double pastry stout. Podcraft Beer Show. I'm your host, Chris. We got special guest host, Josh, Jake. Hello. How's it going? Got, tech, got tech guy, Steve. Hello. Join us. We're back in the saddle. Yep. It's been a while. Has been a little hiatus. Well, we got some good beers today, guys. Yeah. And we it's not get. like we haven't been drinking. That's right. Been studying. 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 Yeah. yeah. Lots of research. A lot, research. Of, a lot of note-taking and a lot of uh, research. Yeah. I agree. So we uh, got a couple beers today, one from uh, Southern Grist, a little dry hop, double dry hop mixed greens. We have a slushy from 450 and um, a couple a couple beers from Horace, a uh, uh, sour as well as a stout, very late sour, and then a... Yeah, a little, uh, little stout hitting, the, hitting every uh, target there. Running all over the place. Let's so, do this. Yeah, that's uh, enough, uh, enough talking. So, let's see what we got, Josh. Come on. See, I got, see if I can do a Charlie here. That was pretty good. Yeah. So the uh, this this first beer is um, double dry hopped mixed grains from uh, Southern Grist in Nashville. Um, let's see. You can smell it already. Definitely. Uh, I. It looks. Oh man. Oh, orange oh. juice. It's. Uh, Love that haze. Super sweet smelling. Uh, in, on the can, there's a little imprint on the bottom that says Citra and Idaho Seven. Do we? know if that's the hops in this or i would assume i'm just pulling this up here give me just one second um little technical difficulties here with my uh not it's it's uh it's wow that is okay so this is what i'm getting maybe you guys get something different it could be the carne asada burrito i had this you know about an hour ago but a lot it's almost got like a a a west coast ipa whoa bitterness to it yeah no, that is super good. So they do um, numerous different renditions. It should say what number this is, but um, I would assume that is your uh, ladies and our rotating New England style India Pale Ale. Each batch brewed with unique hop combinations. See the bottom for the serial number. It looked uh, like it was right right there on the, the side. side. Yeah. yeah, yeah, Idaho and Citro. Let's see. Uh, are you guys getting that real late bitter? Yeah, so it is, yeah like it just holds. It right? just holds on. It's like. It is. That's what I was saying. It's like a West Coast IP, like a traditional West Coast IPA flavor profile, but with the mouthful of a hazy. It's kind of, kind of interesting in that regard. I like it. It's really good. I'm a big fan of that. Um, that Southern Grist. It. Uh, um, yeah, they make some good stuff. Make phenomenal beers. I don't think sure. I've had anything bad from them. Uh, we had that one with the gin. <laughs> oh, the was that That's, the gin? The the four, yeah, yeah the, the the it was a the, it was a Horace clap, right? Yep. The the yeah. suitcase or whatever the five yeah. beers. Yeah. Um, you know what? That that's not on them though. I mean, that that was a little experimental. I'll see how it goes. Hmm. It was, yeah, a, a dry stout like that was was a little off putting. It was so I had the gin, like you know when you drink a gin and like just leaves your tongue, right? So it was like a it was a heavy stout. The all the all five of the beers had the same stout. Four of them were uh, bourbon or s- bourbon and uh, whiskey because there was, mm-hmm. and then there was one that same beer but in a gin barrel. And as you were drinking it, it was just like it would hit your tongue. And you know how like a stout will kind of hang out, like the the richness, the chocolatey richness will hang out on your tongue a little bit as you're drinking it. This just like cleansed the palate, and it was like almost like just like drinking a dry martini, but a stout. It was yeah. it was super weird. I was not prepared for that. Yeah. It was Charlie's favorite, if I recall correctly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're gonna get him a whole keg, the uh, whole barrel. Yeah, no, that's a super tasty uh, New England. I, I do like the the bitterness on the end. Bigger fan of uh, bitterness of a West Coast IPA. Yeah, though. getting some citrus tones there. Yep. Hey, so um, you know, it's been a while since we've been together, guys. Yeah. Any uh, what's uh, what's the best period you've had recently? Oh my goodness, so many to think of now. Yeah. <laughs> I had a, uh, a Humble C, the R2D2. Yeah, it's a great one. That 
is a phenomenal hazy. I could never tire of drinking those. We uh, so, yeah, we went down to and I'm gonna I'm gonna be I'm gonna forget the name. Maybe you can help me with the name of the beers. But we had head down to uh, Original Forty down in North Park. Kind of the first time going there and, and, and trying some of their beers out. And we went through almost the whole menu uh-huh. and didn't really find anything off putting. Everything was like hit the mark on the style. They had a Mexican lager that was really great. They had a Kolsch that was really great. Yeah. They had a hazy uh, sunset, something sunset, if I remember correctly. Uh, they even had, <laughs> they wouldn't pour us that lemonade one because it was the last keg of the batch. They did pour it, but they it was did thick. pour it. It, it was settled down. It wouldn't settle down, so they were, you know, made the good call. Of like we're not selling that to customers. Oh, sure. Like even if we could make some money off of it, so I, I you know, mm-hmm. that's they I love it. it. I went in later and got some food after we had gone down to North Park. Came back over, and they had said that they had figured it out. Oh, okay. The, the, they put a different keg on. It was okay. good to go, but they think that rainy taste, that thick. Yeah. May have been the end of the barrel. Oh, uh, okay. So that the, la- the last keg they pulled for Juice Maze. Was yeah, Juice Maze, was. yeah. Yeah, the, uh, I mm-hmm. love places where you can go in and they put the type of hops that are mm-hmm. next to the style. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if you know you like a Citra, I, I, I like the West right. Coast as well. Right. And if I see Citra on there or a Mosaic, I know <laughs> the flavor profile already. Right. And I know you like those hops. And I know I'm going to give that one a chance. Yeah. Glowing Sunset was another one. That was just a regular West Coast IPA. I like that. What was the the fruit one? That's why I was looking at Jiffy Fluff. That was it. Jiggly Fluff. Jiggly Fluff. Was it a, it was a Berliner, right? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. It was super good, too. Yeah. When we were camping, I drove down to the Solana Beach um, uh, bottle craft. Three or four times. <laughs> Once is, a day. <laughs> it's, so much, it's, so, it's so much fun because it's just like there's so much to choose from. Yeah. So, And I tried a bunch of beers I normally wouldn't have picked, mostly because of the ship. Yeah. But uh, Society Brewing is not enormous. Berliner Weiss. Yeah. You guys had that? It's like 3.9%. Yeah. It's so it's really good. crystal clear. I, the, uh, who, uh, Burning Beer did a 3.2 Berliner Weiss. Mm-hmm. A couple years ago for their anniversary, uh-huh. and it was delicious. They did uh, different adjuncts to it. They did like four variations of it. All of them were good. They had a guava. They went did one with the syrup, which I think is the traditional way that they do it. Yeah. And uh, do you remember? I don't feel like there's an orange. One. I just don't remember the name of it. It's they yeah. haven't really had it. I know I sent you guys a picture of that Mario. Tart, yeah, it's cherry chaser. Tart. Oh, it's so good. It was good. It was so delicious. Especially given that we had that big conversation about how there's not enough cherry, cherry based beers. Beers, and this is so so good. I was uh, <laughs> I was just going through the last uh, order I picked up from Lost Abbey. Yeah, and uh, there is a uh, I totally forgot. It was even, no, I totally forgot it was even in my stash. Oh, yeah. It was a cherry with a poppy seed. Oh, is it the red poppy? Hot red poppy. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I forgot I even had this. And I'm like, I might have to pop that. I didn't realize that Mario Kart um, company is uh, 8 bit brewing with this like little uh, mug guy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're right up in Temecula, is it? Oh, nice. Uh, eight I guess we'll little, take a roadie. Looks like a Pac-Man with beer. Yeah. <laughs> That's fun. Yeah, they do a lot of really cool um, can art over there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, so that was a... Uh, that was a I, I'm a fan of that. Uh, that mixed greens. Yeah, that was pretty good. I, I, I like... It's like a... To me, it's almost like a, a hybrid of two different styles. It's a hazy IPA, but with the, the, the residual to the aftertaste of a... a Typical West Coast IPA. I mean, that's totally like as I, I drank it, I was like, "Oh, that's a soft, fluffy, hazy." And like as I drink it, it's like, "Oh, here comes the, you know, palate wrecker, yeah. ruination chaser." <laughs> right. Or maybe I've just gotten soft over the years. You know, it's um, probably like seventy IBUs. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, that. Yeah. That ruination was uh, hundred. Hundred plus. Yeah. Yeah. No, that was. 
Yeah. What do you got next, Josh? Supreme Slushy XL. It's uh, we got a kettle bear kettle sour with raspberry, pomegranate, strawberry, double vanilla, and sour cherry. Here we go. Cherry oh, again. Yeah. Love it. So from four from four fifty, um, make great slushies. Oh, you know, the um, excited about uh, yeah. but those those are <laughs> kind of tough to get in, in, in San Diego. That <laughs> it it is. I'm just you know because you can't see on our podcast. It is almost a purple. Yeah, it's a heavy, violet, a light, uh, you know, purpley violet. Your shirt. Yeah, <laughs> my little Oktoberfest. Oktoberfest is fast yeah, approaching. It is. I wonder how much Oktoberfest we're actually going to get this year. I'm hoping to get some. Something more than last year. Yeah, zero. We had a little Oktoberfest over yeah. at Charlie's house. Yeah, we did. That was, well, that, that was great. That, <laughs> hey, that was why. I, did you make it to that one? Uh, yeah, when we did the and, sausages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah right. no, tons of great. sausages. You know, too. The, there's. I, you know, just, it's Pils- It's definitely like Pilsner Marzen season right now. Right. Everybody's gotten their Oktoberfest. Like, Pilsner's, like, coming off out of the woodworks. Like, every brewery I go to now has a Pilsner on tap almost every single time. Yeah. I like, saw Costco had the traditional Carl Strauss Oktoberfest oh, yeah. cases. Right. Yeah, it's been a while since I've had that beer. Oh, yeah. It's probably the La Mesa Oktoberfest. That... That was my. Good I remember, right. like every too. time I saw that at Costco this time of year, I always picked up a twenty-four pack and just threw it in the fridge. Yeah. I like it to get a little cooler before the marts start. Yeah, back. yeah, yeah. For sure. They're heavy on the malt. They are. Did you see the news about um, from Stone? They're going to start doing single barrel releases. Oh, are they? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Like other, yeah, just single barrel. Stout. Single barrel. No, a single barrel drop of a different beers. So the first one's like an orange IPA, orange. Huh. And that ginger. they barrel aged? No, the, like they're calling it one barrel. Mm-hmm. Oh, like they did one barrel batch. One right, barrel oh, batch. Okay, got it. So thirty three gallons ish. It depends beer. on what their barrel is. What they call sure. a barrel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that seems like I, very little I, beer. That's, it's almost like something that would come out of Liberty Station, right? They would brew right. it in Liberty Station, can it there. Small batch. Yeah, September 2nd is the first, is the first release. Yeah. Are they doing huh. any brewing at Liberty Station? Yeah. Yeah, uh-huh. they have a brew system there. Yeah, that's, that's where like they, they it was all there. The R&D was always there. Yeah. They, you, it was you know, where Pog came from. Remember the Pog? Yeah, that was so oh, good. Yeah, so. Pog. So what do you guys think of this here? It's good. Yeah, it's, it's delicious. Lives up to the 450 <laughs> North. Oh, Expect God. nothing less from those yeah. guys. Right. Yeah, no, that vanilla definitely comes through. I think it softens it. But like, yeah. uh, I taste Still a little like sour cherry. Cherry. sour cherry. Not that I would ever do this, but this is something you could pour into a cup and drive to the store with. And <laughs> the cop pulls you over. It's just my smoothie, sir. <laughs> it is like a smoothie, huh? But yeah, I mean. I got that at Jamba Juice. <laughs> slushy uh, slurp. Oh. You know, I don't know if it would. I'll, I will just say this. Is their slushies I've noticed have been less pulpy of late. They're a little. Do you remember? Like, it, I always felt like I ch- had to chew some of them, and I don't know if that was <clears throat> because we had to get them shipped, right? And they fermented, right, and caused that, or if now we're getting them, you know, temperature controlled a little more often, so they're not as uh, they're not kind of fermenting in the can and. And causing havoc, right? Like these were like uh, you know, these were more controlled by like, getting these, right? Mm-hmm. Like they were refrigerated, trucked to Sacramento, and then put on ice, and, and the guy like kept them on ice for the three days to get them down here. So probably a little bit fresher, and they certainly didn't uh, spend you know a week getting uh, yeah. shipped in the slowest fashion possible in the back of the <laughs> yes truck, FedEx truck in the middle of know. the summer, right? Yeah, <laughs> so, through the yeah. Midwest. <laughs> yeah, they're uh, I lost like a this, this coworker I sent me that. like cases of of uh there was i mean it was crazy how much beer he had sent and uh they exploded it didn't make it nope those guys down at fedex down in uh, chula vista were the one that never showed up and they're like we lost it yeah or it got damaged yeah yeah Yeah, so it exploded one one got damaged the guy opened it up and said hey Hey, look at this guys look at this at least at least the bomb squad didn't show yeah atf shows up in your house right yeah no, it could could be worse i guess so yeah no that's uh that's uh, a great beer the, yeah those slushies are phenomenal yeah this is yeah. this is good i'm sure I, this wasn't produced by the naked juice company right yeah no that's what it, yeah it's like that's, a, a, that's where it is right there that's literally right like those little uh mixed berry purple machine yeah 
Those are actually really good. You used to get those a lot until Suzanne uh, pointed out how much sugar there was in them. Which and yeah, fruit's got sugar. Quite a bit of sugar in that. Yeah. It's all natural sugar. That, that's yeah. the sugar that's good for you. I believe this is also a serving of fruit. Yes. Yeah, that's pretty tasty. I'm certainly a fan. So the uh, the best beer that I had recently, um, I went out uh, last weekend, went to, to Modern Times, okay. and they had uh, they had Ultra on tap. Oh. So they had the... Which ones? Uh, they had the coffee and the vanilla, and then they had a cuvee. Mm. Um, so they, they had a mixture of all three of them. So, we, didn't they do that um, last time? Or was that we did. We So yeah, we did the whole set on that day and then yeah. cuvee that and like monster tones afterwards. It's such a good beer. I mean, it's phenomenal. Yeah. Little, little, like, a little difficult to roll in there. Like, yeah, no, it's such a good beer. That cuvee was, was phenomenal. I, I'd say that was probably my favorite, followed by the, the vanilla and finally the, the coffee. Was There's, it on par with the, the last couple sets? It was good. It was like probably the best stout that I had had in quite some time. Mm. You know? This is the third time they've done that, right? Yeah. Is, yep. And this time, this time on the coffee one, they used Geisha coffee. Okay. So, th- which they also sold individually. Oh, yeah. You could get the coffee, but that's what they, they actually, if I remember correctly from my readings, they actually made the coffee and actually poured coffee into it rather than just sitting the beans in it. Mm-hmm. They actually made the coffee. I don't know if they cold brewed it or yeah. what, and then poured it into the actual barrels hmm. to taste. Yeah. So I'm like, well, that's probably not a bad thing. Yeah, no, that, uh, I'm excited to try that coffee. Yeah, um, oh, I, I got a couple cases of it, so we'll, at some point we'll be, uh, we'll be uh, going after that again. I like it. What's, uh, what's next, Josh? Got a little Horus, the Convocation, Convocation 2020. It is Treffle. I believe I'm pronouncing that right, because it's not a U. Uh, it's a white wine barrel aged Belgian style sour ale mm. aged in Sencha. I'm going to, if I cuss right now, I apologize. Fuka Mushi tea and spru, spiru, Spirulina. Oh, that was perfect. Perfect I pronunciation on all of those. Why don't you give that a go? So I, I've never seen that word before in my life. Uh, so this is the um, this is the collab that Horace did with Stave and Nail. Okay. Where they did the the four different uh, uh, barrel aged sours and then adjunct them with uh, with fruit or um, and and teas, right? Like they they did a peach one with another type of tea, but they're all like kind of tea based. Yeah. On that that uh, I think it's um, yeah spirulina. We've Spider- done a few beers yeah. like that, like that ectoplasm mm-hmm. or whatever, yes. um, like the super green. Mm-hmm. Seneca Fukumushi tea. I had Fukumushi. I got that one right, but it it could have been <laughs> Fuka something. You slow it down, it becomes... Fuka. You, might get, you might get yourself canceled. Canceled. Uh, this, uh, this pours lemonade. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it looks like a lemonade. Yeah, this, um, this set, I wasn't, you know, I was, it just kind of like, I'm not a fan of tea. Like at all, you know. So I was like, oh, yeah, I don't know if I'm gonna enjoy like these." Beers. But all three, like all three that we've had so far, have been great. You know, they've been uh, pretty tasty. I get like a Meyer lemony mm, smell almost certainly. out of it, but that that could just be the sour doing that. Like smell that barrel in there, too. like yeah. the sour. In there. I think it's interesting. It's in a clear bottle as well. You don't see a lot of beers. So he, all of them had super different colors, right? Like so, he uh, when he made these labels, he. Um, Busted out the the box of crayons with his daughter and told her to match a crayon to each color of the beer. Uh, so he put them all in, in clear bottles and then um, had his daughter match the the color of the beer with a crayon and then he made the label like that color. There's, there's not a hop issue in there. There's right. Not a, light's not going to do anything to a sour. Yeah, it's and just... he wanted to uh, really show off the color of them. But That's yeah, cool. you don't see beer in like a clear really bottle. Don't. It's always a uh, you know dark bottle like that. Unless it's Corona or Newcastle. Or Newcastle. Yeah. Yeah, I don't even think there's hops in Corona. I just, you know, it's like malt liquor almost. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, man, you guys hit any breweries in the last month besides that we haven't talked about? Where else did we go? We hit Fort North. I, um, I don't know. What are you doing over there, Chris? <laughs> I FaceTime called somebody. <laughs> My, like, 17 people. <laughs> he, actually, we went, uh, 
I I returned to a brewery I had essentially given up on in its early days and just not had, just didn't go. Like I had a, you know, it's one of those, you have a bad experience and you're kind of like, eh, it's not really, I don't, it's mm-hmm. not easy to get there. It's, you know, where I want to go is North Park. Yes. And you were with us when we went. And uh, yeah, I was pleasantly surprised about my second experience there. Just like, the beers were phenomenal. Everything I had was delicious. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, it was just a much better experience this time. And I, I mean, I knew I, when I went to them originally, it was within the first six months of them opening. And I just felt, I felt like I was enjoying the, um, uh, guest taps more than I was their taps. Yeah. And it, their guest taps weren't like hugely great. I mean, there's some Ale Smith on there, uh, things like that. You know, I had a 450 or, uh, it was not four fifty, uh, three ninety four. Yeah, was on uh, things like that. But I was, I we drank, I drank all of their beer. Yeah, when I was no. there, and liked every single one of them. Their beer is phenomenal. I, I was, I was down there um, just the other day. I, I stopped in. I actually, uh, um, I went down there for. Uh, I met my manager down there, but they have their North Park fifth anniversary uh, beers right now. They did a hazy. Uh, a hazy triple, I think, and then a um, uh, triple dry hop West Coast double IPA uh, with Citra, Incognito, Centennial, Amarillo. Um, uh, so Citra Incognito, uh, Centennial, Amarillo, Simcoe, Mosaic, and Strata hops. Cool. It was <laughs> unbelievable. It was so tasty. It was uh, like everything you want in a, in a West Coast IPA. I mean, he makes like the best like West Coast IPA in town. For sure, right now, like that hot foo yeah. is always a bang. Yeah. You know, absolutely. I'd say yeah, I'm a yeah. big fan. And of it that. wasn't that like, if I remember correctly, hot foo was like his home brewing it was like beer go to beer that he won like awards. numerous awards yeah. with. Uh, um, yeah, I don't want to. I mean, it was like multiple years, like four yeah. or five years. He was like home brewer. Uh, like that, that one beer was. Um, that's it. Was good. I I enjoyed all of them. Yeah. Yeah. When we were camping, we went to Lost Abbey. Oh, over right over next to the. How was it? It was good. I mean, it's a fun place, and there wasn't a bad beer we had. But I don't. I didn't take a picture of the list. The uh-huh. Uh huh. But they had a bunch of the IPAs from the. What's the other company that they? Uh, had? Hop Connect. Is that what it is? Hop Connect. Hop Concept. Yeah, Concept. Hop Concept. Yeah. So they yep. had a couple of IPAs there. Christy really liked them, and they did the same thing that Jake likes, where they had the. They told you which hops they were, right? And they weren't like special IPA. They, they had no IPA name. They just said IPA, and then with the whatever hop it was, they, uh, they'll call it anything. Just yeah, this yeah. this IPA with this hop. Yeah. Here's the ABV. Enjoy. <laughs> yeah. Hey, <laughs> fine, <laughs> fine. Makes yeah. marketing easier. Yeah. Well, in Boston Abbey, I just was driving downtown to go to the ball game and stumbled upon their uh, new location. Oh, yeah. In the East Village area. Is that it's, the church they bought? Yeah. Uh-huh. Is it right. Abbey? The, the confession. No, it's the confessional, I think, is yeah. where you went, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 I wonder what they're actually going to call that one. Yeah. What is that? Uh... But it was, construction was underway, so that was promising. I'm excited because it's a lot closer to drive to pick up, you know, orders and stuff like that, you know. Just, I drive down to 10 minutes from my house rather than, you know, 40 minutes up to San Marcos and back. Right. Yeah. So I'm looking at that Hop Foo, like all of the awards that he won for that. Um, the the 2009 uh, National Homebrewers Conference Western Division first place, 2010 Final Round first place, 2011 uh, Runner Up Best of Show, 2012 first place, 2013 first place, 2014 sec first place, and then he opened up a brewery. Right. Stop. <laughs> Yeah, so that's pretty impressive. I mean, you look at it, like there's just every year he's like taking home medals, first or second place medals at uh, the National Homebrew Conference mm-hmm. for like the same IPA. Dave, don't mess with Oregon. Right? Yeah, mm-hmm. no. So he, uh, they like his his uh, hot combination goes up now. I wonder what's in that. When did he start making it? What was the first year? Two thousand four. It showed actually uh, two thousand seven was hop hop foo version one. Uh, version three was 2008, four and five. So were... This one, I, I'm guessing they're because just from the flavor profile, it's like it, I think that's pre mosaic being pretty popular, but it, I think that's Citra, the beginning. I wonder if that's what's in that in that uh, in that beer. 
Because I was kind of, I mean, just as when I was home brewing, that's about the time I was home brewing, and that's when Citra was just that's that's what you used if you were doing an IPA. So this is this is he gives you the recipe. I just sent you guys this article that that talks about the hops. He uses uh, um, 123 theoretical IBUs is what that thing comes in at, but uh, he uses Chinook. Warrior, Columbus, Amarillo, Simcoe, Citra, Amarillo, Columbus, Centennial. Yeah. Wow. I'm like, does it give the uh, schedule on the hop? It does. Yeah, he talks about where he where he does them first work, 60 oh, minutes, 30 minutes. Right. I mean, it breaks down everything. The water profiles. Like, Oh, uh, man, he does have this locked in. Yeah, a lot of these up-and-coming breweries, they, have the, they can control the water. And so often, where you where you brew it is the profile that you get because of the water, the acidity right. in the water, et cetera. But now that you can, the first time I had heard that concept was with Mike and Jeff over yep. at, at Burning Beard and their ability to do that. Yeah. That was the first time that, that I had heard of that too, was like dialing it into, uh, I think you had actually told me that mm-hmm. they were, uh, and that's why San Diego, you know, that IPA capital of the world right. is more about our water and anybody mm-hmm. can make it. Well, not anybody. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, I wonder if that has a big play on like someplace like Sierra Nevada with the different water, total different water. Well, on. I, you know, just as an example, uh, modern times they brew in Portland and they brew in San Diego. And so they've had beers uh, that they've done originally in San Diego and then they'll move it up, they'll build, brew it up in um, Oregon. Depending on, like, they're the hazy, for me, the hazies that they brew in Oregon, the small batch hazies they brew in Oregon, are much better than the ones in San Diego because the water up there is naturally soft. Yeah. So you're already starting mm-hmm. with a soft palate. You know, you're not getting this. We have hard water. And it's something, like, you could, you can't adjunct all of that into the brewing system. Like, you can pull certain things out. You can add certain things in. But to get a, a, a just already soft water going in, um, just makes those hazies a lot more pillowy um, in those uh, uh, when they do them up in Portland. Yeah. So. I like it. So we hit that. Uh, It'll stop to finish her off. So our uh, our final, I got it, I got it over here. Our final beer is uh, uh, Bonelli's Distraction. Is that it? Yeah. Bonelli? yeah, Bonelli's Distraction. It's a uh, Balcones whiskey barrel aged imperial style with coconut, geisha coffee, hazelnuts, and vanilla added. So um, it's gonna suck. He did a collab with. Yeah, you guys um, don't want this, do you? Yeah. It might be all right. I mean, it's a small bottle. I yeah. mean, if I have right. to. He did a uh, he did a collab with um, American Solera. Uh, it was called Distractions Grass. It was a non barrel aged stout. This is the barrel aged version mm. of that beer. Mm. Um, Motor oil. Yeah, no, for sure. They uh, it smells delicious. It sure does. Oh, typical like a oh. horrid mouth feel. Dude, that is super like thick. That smell just kind of hit me. You know. Yeah, lots of coconut in that. Yep. Just perfect mixture of the barrel on there. And a lot of times you get like kind of uh, you know with, with coconut beers like you know you get too much in there it kind of gets suntan lotiony. Yeah. Not on this. No. No. I mean, I think it's uh, I think it's a great amount of uh, it's perfect. It's really well balanced it's a it's a little i get a little alcoholy mm-hmm. probably from the bourbon a little bit from was it 16 percent on there or 14 um yeah 15 5 15 5 okay <laughs> you can taste it it's smooth like a dessert stout but the barrel yeah you can taste that in there it's it's almost has like a syrupy flavor to it probably from the vanilla and the hazelnut right it's like that you're but you kind of almost get a maple syrup. I was I was thinking the same thing. I was wondering is that the is that the hazelnuts kind of you know the mixture? Um, and there's like certainly you kind of catch maple that on the back. Rex up at Pure Project. Pure. It, it's got geisha coffee in it too. Holy cow! It's got a it just from the flavor. It's got a lot of vanilla in there too. I don't. Yeah. It's, yeah. Certainly. Um, wow. Is the geisha coffee? Beer. Is that a new trend? I've been it's hearing like that the, more. It's the best coffee. So like you want to make the bucks a pound. Yeah. I think for well, I think the eight ounce count. bag was twenty eight bucks. Yeah, I think they do. Um, I think in the every drop, Steve. Maz Morel, get my shake that bag. bottle out. <laughs> yeah, I think it's um, what's his name? Uh, Jason Mraz does. You know, he has a coffee farm here in uh, 
uh, San Diego, like up in Oceanside. Okay. He recently sold some like geisha coffee through um, uh, through Bird Rock. So it was like the first geisha coffee that had been uh, grown in in the states, usually like Central America. Yeah. It was going for something ridiculous, like um, hundreds of dollars a pound. Let's see. That's. I mean, I like coffee. Yeah, and I like good coffee, but that's. Uh, <laughs> Um, just make great music. <laughs> so he, uh, it was, oh, so $199 for four ounces. <laughs> so that's $50 a cup of coffee if you're yeah. doing pour overs. All right. Wow. It's the happy Van Winkle of that's, yeah. coffee. Yeah. So, like, Bird Rock has a bunch of, uh, you know, not to uh, talk about coffee for just a minute, but they have a bunch of, like, you can go in there and they have these, like, cylinders, so, you know, like, like, yeah. They have some, like, these specialty coffees that, um, and I, we were down there one day, and I was, like, just grabbing a few bags of coffee. I'm like, oh, that looks good. And if they're, like, small, like... Four ounces. Four ounces, yeah. Maybe eight ounces. I don't even think mm. there's eight ounces in there. And they just, like, wallop you over the head. <laughs> you know, like, $60 or whatever. I'm like, mm. man. Wow. Like, they have that. some, like, specialty stuff. Some uh, a, lot of, a lot of it's geisha. Like, you look at any of this geisha, it's, like, $30 for four ounces to um, 299 that's really good. Nice small bottle too. Yeah, no, that's like a perfect size. I was just looking through. I, um, I, I love that it's size. A twelve ounce right? bottle. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I, I'm a big fan of the twelve ounce stout. It's like my favorite size right now because it's a. If you want to, you could do it on your own. Just take a little bit longer. Yeah. But if you want to share it with one other person, it's like the perfect amount. Right. Six ounces. I'm good. Right. Twenty two. That's just too much. That's a to commitment. Do. Yeah, no, it, it is. beats it, you up a little bit for sure. It's it's tough. Yeah, no, I I agree. Um, that's, yeah. I'm a fan of like that size uh, bottle for sure. And I I mean I'm even honestly I, mean, I know I've said this before I'm I'm willing to pay a little extra to get the smaller can right because then to me it's like okay I pay thirty five dollars for a twenty two I would pay fifteen you know. That's uh, thirty five. So let's say I'm paying eighteen dollars for each six, twelve ounce. Mm -hmm. I'm in because right. I, you're getting two more. But even if the money was a little bit more per ounce, like yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah, for I'm sure. in for it because now I got two bottles. You're not like dumping out ten. Yes, ounces, you know, or like, true. Not having to up a, finish or, it. Or, yes. or, or like a bomber of like falling asleep high while you're stout. Yeah, and then you're like, oh, this isn't really that yeah. good. You know, if it's twelve ounces, one thing. All right, gents. So we uh, we had the Southern Grist IPA, the Double Dry Hop Mixed Greens. We did the 450 North, the Slurp Cream Slushy XL, the Horus and Stave and Nail uh, Truffle, and finally the uh, Bonelli's Distraction a Barrel Aged Stout from Horus. What uh, what was your favorite, Jake? It's hard to go against a, a Horus Stout, but to be a little different, I'll go with the 450 North, the, the Slurpee. Yeah, yeah, it was good. That yeah. It's how smooth it was. It sometimes it can those can taste a little riny. Yeah, and that did not. Yeah. It was I, really good. It's been a long time since I've had them, and I think it was you know fresher than than we normally have had them previously. It was great. It was, it was great. Beer. Yeah, you, Josh. Uh, like it, Jake, it's hard to go against that stout. It's so good. It's it's like a melt in your mouth. Mm -hmm. It's the best candy you could ever have. It's yeah, it's, it's like decadent chocolate. Like it's just. Somebody made something really, really good, and it's... No, it's great. It's phenomenal beer. You going with the, the Horus? Yeah, I think so. I did like the Sour, too. I like... Actually, this is, you know, outside of us doing, like, a whole four stouts or whatever, sure. where everything's great. This has been one of the best lineups I've had. I think it was... Yeah, I think yeah. it was phenomenal. Yeah. Steve, what are you going with for your I beer? I have to go with the IPA. <laughs> You're going with the IPA? I was thinking the same thing. You know, I mean, I love the I love the Stout. Really, I, I, I really like... Um, you know, the beers that I went back for seconds on were like the truffle. I, I thought that was great too, but I really like that stout, just like the, the West Coast finish on like kind of a, um, you know, New England style IPA. Yeah. I think. I, everything was interesting. Yeah. A yeah. little different. Yeah. Everything, everything was what it should be when you read, when you looked at the beers and got like, oh, this is what it should yeah. taste like. It tasted like what it should taste like. Yeah. Nothing was off. The well, they all, all hit it out of the park for their style yeah. right yeah it's no there hard, wasn't it's a bad, hard to pick a bad beer four completely right. different yeah. styles right, right. four well, winners that's what i was trying yeah, to do no, like great. which one would get stuck on a desert island 
<laughs> right. Well, that's the idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, you don't want that. Uh, yeah, not, not with that. Depends on how long you're on yeah, the Yeah, I guess. Too. <laughs> but I like it. Well, so there we are, guys. Uh, you you heard it here. Uh, I guess we'll, we'll see you next week. Yeah. Yep. Thanks for having us. Thanks for listening. Thanks. Appreciate it. Cheers. Cheers. Well, I sincerely hope you enjoyed today's show. If you'd like to subscribe to the show via your favorite podcast player app, then head over to thepodcraft.com and look for the subscribe links. You can also get all the links mentioned in this podcast, pictures of all the beers and other good information at thepodcraft.com. The site also has links to send us email feedback and to connect with us on social media. In closing, please continue to recommend the Podcraft Beer Show to your craft beer friends and family members in your life. The more the merrier. Thank you so much for sharing your time and attention with us. For Chris and Charlie, this is Tech Guy Steve signing off for this week's The Podcraft Beer Show. Have a great rest of your day. The Podcraft Show is licensed under Creative Commons Attribution Share Alike 4.0 International. All rights reserved 2020 through 2021. The show is produced by AztecMedia.net. If you have questions, then please email thepodcraftpodcast at gmail.com. Fair use notice. Reference material and media have been placed within this medium for informational, educational, and discussion purposes only. In compliance with fair use criteria established in Section 107 of the Copyright Act of 1976. It should also be noted that the opinions expressed on this podcast are those of the participants and are not endorsed by the participants' previous, current, or future employers or advertisers. You still here? It's over. Go home. Go.